Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to share with you four ways you can achieve a smooth sculpting experience even on a fairly low end computer like mine, for example. Number one is to use collection. As a general rule, the less you have going on in a scene, the smoother it's going to be. And taking advantage of collections is one way to achieve this. Chances are when you're sculpting, not everything needs to be visible at all times. Using collections is a great way to group these objects together and hide them when they're not needed. In this particular scene, for example, I have a skills collection with over a hundred objects, which is a resource hog, and slows down the viewport. I can simply hide or disable it from collections to get an improvement and free up memory, as you can see here when I toggle its visibility. Number two is to disable cavity. Having cavity on while sculpting makes it easier to see the details on your mesh, but having it permanently enabled on the other hand does impact performance. Cavity is a real-time feature, so Blender has to calculate it in, well, real-time, like while drawing your strokes or moving around the viewport. And in most cases, Blender performs better when cavity is disabled, but having some form of cavity can be helpful. So here are some alternatives. First alternative is to use matte caps. Matte caps have a unique way of emulating certain materials and light conditions. This can be taken advantage of to substitute cavity, especially the basic two matte cap. This, as you can see, shows most of the details on your mesh, just kind of like cavity. Second alternative is to add the toggle for cavity to your quick access, which I already have and quickly toggle it on and off once you notice your scene starting to lag. I have had ups so I have to tap Q twice to get access to my quick access. Another alternative is to have a smaller view area where you can have cavity permanently enabled. Simply hit Ctrl space bar while your cursor is above the view to go into a pseudo full screen and here you can enable or disable certain features that will only apply to this view. These features might affect the overall performance but the view where you do your main sculpting should still run smoothly. The number three way to reduce lag is to use the voxel remesher instead of dynamic topology. The voxel remesher in 2.81 is simply amazing and in most sculpting use case would always perform better than dynamic topology. There are some things you need to be aware of if you're going to be using the voxel remesher. First, kind of like with dynamic topology, the lower you go with the voxel size, the more details you get as you can see with this sculpt, the one on the left with a lower voxel size has more details. Also, when you get to around 0 0.009 level of details on a decently sized mesh, be careful with how low you go, especially if you have a not too powerful computer. I find that subtracting a value of 0 0.001 or even 0 0.0005, yep, that's a mouthful, at a time will be your safest bet as you don't want to end up with a very dense mesh that could freeze up said computer. And here is a warning from the implementer of the voxel remesher, Pablo Dubarro. What you should never do with the voxel remesher is use it for the topology of any kind of objects because the edge flow is going to be completely random. And you should never, never, never subdivide a mesh from the voxel remesher. I mean, if you look at this, there's no way this is going to look fine after subdividing it. Yep, I have been guilty of this and it does result in a lot of headaches later. I'll link to Pablo's Blender conference talk in the description if you want to watch the full video, which I'd recommend if you haven't seen it. And finally, the number four way to reduce lag is to use the box height available in sculpt mode. This method is my favorite as it can sometimes even lead to twice the increase in speed. To demonstrate, I'm going to be using fraps to display the frame difference before and after I use it. Let's take an example of when you're getting close to finalizing your sculpt and you've joined the necessary objects together. This results in a single object with a high poly count and the viewport starts to lag. You hit the slash key, go into local view, which helps a bit but probably not enough. Take note of the FPS count to see how it increases after I perform the next set of actions. In sculpt mode, and from a view where you can see your entire mesh, 
hit H to bring up the familiar box selection or use the tool as you can see over here. Then select every part of your mesh you're not actively sculpting on at that moment to hide them and immediately Blender speeds up. Now you can smoothly pan around your scene, sculpt and be free to clean up mistakes as your scene doesn't lag on every action. When you're done, hit Alt H to unhide. Repeat this process as needed and before you know it, you're pretty much done. This was how I was able to add the final details on the sculpt. And there you have it. Use these techniques however it best suits your workflow and you'll have a very smooth sculpting experience. Couple this with the workbench render engine with cavity and shadows enabled and you've got yourself a lot of quick test renders. If you're interested in learning about sculpting, I'd really like to recommend Zacharias Reinhardt's course on mastering sculpting in Blender. It is a paid course that I myself recently completed and it's pretty much my main introduction to the concept of digital sculpting and the results have been amazing to me, which is why I'd recommend it. The course is based on dynamic topology sculpting, but if you use the tips on the Voxel Remesher, you should have an overall smooth experience with it. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you know of any techniques that can be used to improve performance in Blender, please let me know in the comments as I would greatly appreciate it. And if the Lord tarries, I'll see you next time. Bye.